that this international conference is being held virtually and we are being able to attend. I am not a very knowledgeable person on the great book Bhagavad Gita and there is no question of being a scholar either. I am simply a reader, a common person, and from that point of view, I will try to present my things, my ideas. The name of my presentation is Gita and the Gitas, an overview. Very intentionally, I have done this because what I think that the knowledge, that the lofty knowledge the human race has got from the Bhagavad Gita is not something which was given or which was attained instantly in a moment. Rather, I think that the human race has got, attained, achieved this knowledge through generations. And this knowledge actually has been revised and revised, modified, altered, changed, and at the end, it reached to the genie. What is Gita? What the Bhagavad Gita? We all know Bhagavad Gita is the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. Yes. This is the conversation, and this is a very common knowledge. At the very outset of the war, at the Krukshetra war, everyone knows Arjuna got very feeble, he was very nervous, and it was Lord Krishna who actually tried to encourage him to fight. And we all know that the Bhagavad Gita is given in the Mahavarata, the longest book of the world. And it was written by Krishna Daipayan Vedabhasha. This is the common knowledge. And whenever the question of Gita comes to our mind, we actually get this picture. On the chariot, there is the chariot, Lord Krishna himself, and the prince warrior, Arjuna. This is the, this is the picture that we visualize all the time. Now the question is, where do we get the Gita in the Mahavarata? It is also a very commonplace thing. It is given in the Vishma Parva, very good, from verses 23 to 40. But the question is, do we get the Bhagavad Gita that we read, that is a separate book, do we get this book in the Mahabharata? And I'm sure all the attendees will say no. Here lies the point. Because the Bhagavad Gita that we see, it has got 700 verses. It is a very much articulated, systematic knowledge of something. But the thing that we get in the Mahabharata, in the Bhishma Parva, that is not the same thing that we get in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita, which has been 
internationally acclaimed for many reasons, for theological things, for philosophical causes, for social, political, and economic issues. Now, the point is how the people of the ancient ages, more than 5,000 years before, they reached to these knowledge. The knowledge we got at the beginning from the Veda and from the Upanishads. And everyone knows that the gist of the Vedas and the Upanishads is actually the Gita. It is the book which actually gives us the concept of a coherent vision of one single God. You see, during those days, the Shanatana Dharma followers did have, as we do have right today, many gods and goddesses. But the fact is that Bhagavad Gita is the book who is actually explained the vision, the concept, the knowledge of one single God. It is the book that actually explained the underlying unity of all existence and the connection between them. The book, it teaches us the relationship between man to man, between man with nature, between man with God, nature with God, and man, nature, and God. And for that very reason, it has been so important through ages, through generation, through many parts of the world. And this is the book which actually helps us how to elevate our mind and soul, how to be a good person, how to elevate ourselves that we can reach to God. And that is the reason for which this book has been so much important. Now the question arises, who is actually the narrator of the Bhagavad Gita? This is, the, this is also the general knowledge. We know that it was Krishna who gave the knowledge because Krishna is the person who actually gave the core things, core knowledge to Arjuna. This was Lord Krishna. But if we visualize the Kurukshetra war, then we can see that it was the war place and it was not written there. Who actually told it? In the palace of Dhritarashtra. And it was told by Shanjai, the, the minister of Dhritarashtra. Shanjai told Dhritarashtra what Lord Krishna told to Arjuna. There is a very important thing we have to keep in mind. Was Sanjay able to dictate all the same things in total, in every word? Did he do so? I want to raise this question. And Sanjay actually didn't write the Bhagavad Gita. Who wrote it? Actually, it was written in the Mahabharata, if we say. It was written by Ganesha. Ganesha was the writer. Then the writer himself did have something to contribute also, I must say. And we know that the thing, the idea, the story was actually narrated by Vedobasha himself. Vedobasha told, Ganesha wrote. And what did Vedobasha told? What he learned, what he knew from Sanjay. And what did Sanjay say to the to Dhritarashtra? He said what Lord Krishna was saying in the war field. And this is the conception that we all the time feel about the 
about the omnipresent God. This is the combination of all gods, but the question is, is this the picture that Shanjaya say, saw in the battlefield or did Arjuna see this? I don't think so. This is the vision that the artists of our time, they thought. And you all know that this universal form, the omni form, it was actually given to human race many times. Even in the Mahavarata, we didn't see the universal form, what we called Bisharupa, it not for once. Lord Krishna showed it many times. At least we have got three, four times. And if we look into the descriptions of the universal form, we will find that there are the differences. Sometimes the universal form has got 1,000 heads, 1,000 hands, 1,000 legs, but in other places, we see that there are the differences. What I want to mean that actually the generations, the scholar generations of that time, they actually wanted to try to visualize the concept of God. And at the end, they had been reaching to this place. Then if we come back to the Gita again, what do we see? We see that there are many other Gitas. At least we have got alongside the Bhagavad Gita, we have got more than 34 Gitas. We have got the Gita, Gita means the song, the Gita in the Mahavarata, in other scriptures like the Kurma Purana, Brahma Purana. And gradually, what I want to mean gradually, the scholarly generation of that time, they reached to the final edition, which is called the Bhagavad Gita. The most important Gita that I want to focus on is Vesha Gita, which we find in the Brahma Purana. The other one we got in the Kurma Purana is the Ishvara Gita. And if we look into the Mahavarata, we will find that there is one Uttara Gita, that is the next Gita. And everyone knows that at some time, maybe after one month or one year, once upon a time, Arjuna said to Lord Krishna that what you told during the war, I have forgot. Then Krishna, Lord Krishna, he narrated the knowledge again which is called the Uttara Gita. And the other Gitas are the Garbha Gita, Britta Gita, etc., etc. And you will find that there is one Gita which is named after the name of Parashara, the sheer Parashara. And we know that Parashara was the father of Vesha. And if we see the names, you will find that the Gita, which is given by Srimad Bhagavat, that is Bhagavan, that is Lord God himself, that is named after him, but when it is given by Vasha himself, then it is named after him, it says Vasha Gita. When it is given by Parashara, the scholar person, then it is Parashara Gita. And all those Gitas have been written, is generally it is believed, by Vedavesha himself. And what do we see the contents of all this Gita? These Gitas actually give the concept of God, which is the main question of the human race since thousands of years. And the concept of the soul, the Atma, and these two questions, which have been haunting the whole human race. And these two questions, have been tried to be answered in 
the Bhagavad Gita. And it also says about the objectives of life and after life. And it tells about the pangs of life and the subsequent death. And if we look into the Vasha Gita, we will find that this is the longest Gita that we have got. Among the 34, at least 35 Gitas, the Vasha Gita is the longest one. It is about 1413 verses. It means that it is in volume double than the Bhagavad Gita. And it is a sort of a set of codes, code of life and what code which we need from the very beginning of our life, from birth to death. All the things, what we should do, what we shouldn't have been explained in the book. And from the very beginning of the day to the very end of the day, what we should do and don't. And I believe that this was the main thing at the beginning of Basha or the scholarly generation of that time. And later on, they understood that that is not the most important thing. And if we look into the Ishvara Gita, you will find that in other Gitas, many of the Gitas, Krishna, Lord Krishna is the speaker. But in the Ishvara Gita, the speaker is Lord Shiva. That is a very important thing because before the Kurukshetra war, there was no existence of Lord Krishna as the omnipresent as the incarnation of Vishnu, Krishna was not till then. But who was the most important God till the, till the Kurukshetra war? It was Lord Shiva. So the speaker of the same knowledge has been changed. It was earlier Lord Shiva, later on it was Lord Krishna. And if you go into the Ishvara Gita, you will find that the chapter which we see as named as the Karma Jaga in the Bhagavad Gita, it has been the other edition in the Ishvara Gita. And the thing is that actually the knowledge that Vedavasha or that generation of that time they gave. It was not for the first time. And Mr. It Klaus, was, last two minutes. It was not a new one. It was neither an old one. Here lies the point. It was actually the practice of knowledge which they reached to the zenith, and the name of the culmination is the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much for everyone for watching me. And in the presentation, I have used the female hand because I myself is the male person and the female part of me is there. That is the combination of the human life, which we learn from the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you, everyone. Namaskar.